Grass GIS is installed by default when you install QGIS. And while Grass is a completely standalone GIS software package, you can access most of the Grass capabilities through the Grass plugin. This task will teach you some basic terminology and concepts of how Grass manages data as well as what each button on the Grass toolbar does. And so first we're going to start with some terminology and concepts because Grass has a unique data structure that you need to understand before you work with it. So in order for Grass to start a project, it must be first connected to a Grass database. The database is simply a folder on your computer that has a special set of subdirectories. Once Grass connects to a database, it then needs to access a location. And a location is a child directory of the Grass database and stores the coordinate system or map projection that all the enclosed map sets will use. Think of a location as a common container for a project. A map set is a child directory of the location, and that represents a geographic subset of its parent location. Map sets are the subdirectories that contain the actual GIS data. And there are two types of map sets, permanent and owner. The permanent map set usually contains read-only geographic data that can be used by anyone. The permanent map set also contains other information about the location that's not stored anywhere else, and therefore the permanent map set has to exist in every location. Owner map sets are user-created and represent specific areas or study sites within the location. Think of a map set as a collection of geographic data that is project or user-specific. Owner map sets can be named whatever logical name is desired. And examples of map set names are usually User1 or Nueces County, where User1 represents a map set created by or created for a user on the system, and Nueces County represents a project dealing with Nueces County, Texas. Lastly, there's the concept of regions. A region is a subset of a location defined by a rectangular bounding box, and the region is important for raster operations as it bounds the area that will participate in any raster operations. So a region is an operating parameter set when you're working in grass. And so here, after this long explanation, I've got QGIS Desktop open, and I don't have any data loaded, but I do have the grass plugin installed, and the grass toolbar is docked right up here. Right now, most of the buttons are disabled because I don't have a grass map set open. So I'll open a grass map set using the open map set button, which is this first one on the left hand side. I'll click that and I'm just going to select this grass database. Once I've selected a grass database, I'll have locations underneath that. And then underneath the locations, I'll have various map sets. And you can see the permanent map set. I'm going to open up my data and I'll click OK. Now that I've opened up that map set, you can see the remaining tools on the grass toolbar become active. And from left to right, we've got the open map set button. This button allows you to create a new map set. So you can use this button to create a brand new grass database location and map set. The next button is the close map set button. So it'll close the map set that you have open at the moment. Then the next two buttons are for adding data. This is adding grass vector data. And if I click this, it's going to locate data that is in the map set that I have open. Same with the button next to that, the add raster layer button, and again it will be finding data that's in my map set. After that there's a create new grass vector button, allow you to create a new layer. If I have a layer open, the next button allows you to edit that vector layer. This button here opens up the grass tools, so this is one of the main components of the grass plugin. This opens up a window that gives you access to all the different modules in a hierarchical layout in the modules tree. So there's several hundred grass tools in here that you can access through this. So for example, I can expand this and see the tools underneath each category. There's a modules list, which lists all the modules and has a filter at the top so you can find things. And then the browser, which is going to allow me to find the data that I have in my map set. So I can expand the my data map set, expand the vector folder, and see that I have a couple layers in here. And if I click on one, I'll see some of the metadata about those. In the subsequent tasks, you're going to learn how to work with more of the grass tools.